So, Anash, I'm bringing you on, number one, because, first of all, you do uh, our Facebook campaign, coaching campaigns, uh, review campaigns in the uh, in a group. And you know what? I've never jumped on with you before. This is the first time we've actually met, like, face to well, digitally yeah. face-to-face. So right. this is uh, definitely overdue. So I appreciate you jumping on with me. Sure. Uh, so what I wanted to do is kind of touch base of, like, what you were doing uh, before this business, agency – marketing, working with local businesses or realtors. I know we'll talk about that. Um, and what were you doing prior, kind of where you are now and everything sure. in between? My background was I went to school for marketing and I was a marketing director for a self-storage company. Mm. I had worked as a marketing manager, director in multiple different industries, including dentists, self-storage, restaurants, and all of them were just kind of B2C, right? Retail. Yeah locations, multi-unit, multi-location kind of setup. And then I got, and I was mainly in LA, and then I got recruited for a job to go to Phoenix, where I was a marketing director for a storage company, which had 18 locations um, in the Phoenix, Vegas area. Nice. And then that company got bought over. So no due to no fault of mine i was kind of out of a job you know and <laughs> i had to kind of figure out what is my next move but at the same time i had two young kids one year old and a uh, two month old oh, wow. so and my wife had, had quit her job because you know i was i was doing decent enough to for her to take a break with two kids yeah so my back was kind of against the wall and I had to figure out what do I want to do. And in my, at that time, it was like 12 years of experience or 10 years of marketing experience. I had got laid off twice, which mm. again, both times, one was just kind of the 2008, 2010 yeah. low down in the economy and everything kind of just going sideways. And then this time again, company got bought over. So I was kind of looking around, to be honest, to see what should I be doing. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to do it on my own. And I thought I could do it on my own. So <laughs> because obviously, like, you know, I'm in marketing. Right. Uh, I knew the self-storage industry really well. And I thought I had my niche because the, in self-storage, almost 70% of operators are mom and pop, like small mm -hmm. And 30% is the big ones, big like ones, the yeah. publics and the extra space and all that, right? So I thought I had it down. I could go after real, I could go after self-storage. I could do it on my own. And I kind of dabbled in it while still looking for a job because, you know, things were up in the air. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of came across you guys, talked to one of the coaches uh, and got on a call. And basically it was a one call Grows right. and I was I was ready to go, but but I was ready to go. I needed what you guys were offering, like structure, ways to, uh, you know, coaching and things that were. I like the structure part, which is what I needed. I knew in general I wanted to do marketing, but I had never kind of pushed buttons myself because you know I was hiring outside agencies to do yeah. a lot of work, and I knew the I knew what in concept, but I didn't do it like day to day, right? Sure. So that's when I kind of started out, started kind of pursuing it more steadily and kind of pushing more and more and kind of mm -hmm. doing that on my own. And then um, we, like my wife found a job in Dallas. So then it, there was a little bit of transition where I didn't have anything. We moved to Dallas, set up shop here. And then even here, I was kind of, you know, same boat. I did I found a job? I took up a job. I like I had a nine to five, and then I was still pursuing this on the side. Yeah, yeah, and then that that's kind of what I've been kind of pushing more and more is kind of doing both, right? I've been doing mm -hmm. nine to five, but I've been able to grow this side of the business too because it's it's a lot of is one time you said it. It's once it starts rolling in, it's kind of just upkeep after that. Hundred percent. So wow. So this is even a shock to me. So you're you basically got two income streams. You got your your full time job, yeah. Currently, and you got and you're working this. And I did this for years too, by the way. Um, yeah. And then you're working this full time. Wow. How yeah. many clients do you have? 
Uh, right now, like, so I'm doing a lot of white label for yeah. other folks. So if I count those, then I have about 16. But if I remove, like, because they're someone else's client, I'm just fulfilling, then I have uh, nine or 10 of them right now. Direct clients. But, yeah. Yeah, direct clients paying me directly. But mm -hmm. I have three, I have one who has six that I'm kind of white labeling for them. So they're kind of my partner, but they're not my client per se. No. So I still get paid for it. It doesn't sure. matter. <laughs> <laughs> they they just talk to the client. You do all the work on the back end. Yeah, yeah exactly. And it yeah. works because, you know, she can do all of that. I don't have to worry about it and mm -hmm. it, it works out. So it's it's a good partnership. Absolutely. And so um, when you when you first came in, did you did you feel like there was this big like gap between like what you were doing um, B2B versus what you were doing? Well, B2B, but like with the as a job rather yeah. than like as a entrepreneur when it comes to like marketing, pushing buttons rather than just kind of hiring outside agencies. Did you see like a big gap between that? Yeah, there was because I honestly I never did like Facebook ads. I never I understood the basics of SEO, but when I joined LMV, it was very focused on just lead generation, right? We yeah. were not doing anything else and lead generation either through Facebook ads or Google ads. And I knew both of them in concept. I'd I had kind of overseen other folks do it, but I had not done it myself. Mm -hmm. So there was definitely a steep learning curve even for me because Facebook ads, I knew in theory, like I knew how I knew my way around, but I did not know how to set up sure. a landing page using click funnels, right? I did not know how to set up the automation for tracking. None of those, all of those things were kind of brand new. And the best way I learned was just to do it, right? I had to set up a campaign. I had to figure it out saying, this is how I would do it. And just like anything else, you learn by just doing. A lot of it is good in theory, but it's it's best to do it. And when you do it is when you kind of realize where the gaps are. But yeah, definitely there was a big gap between what I was doing and what I had to do. What you had exactly, yeah, uh, I can imagine because like you know it's like anything, right? You go to school, you go to college to be a doctor, uh, in in school after that to be a doctor, and it's like, listen, you're not going to really learn anything until you're. You're in the emergency yeah. room for your first three years, yeah. really learning what this is about. Yeah. Um, and that goes like with any, with any business, job, college. So that's yeah. awesome. So this is very interesting to me because I I worked. Oh, gosh, I, I think I worked. Uh, I ran this as a side hustle. 2014 is when I started. So it really there was really not much income, I mean, a little bit 14, 15. I still did it into 16. I still did it into 17, 2017. I was too scared to leave, right? Yeah. I was like, I, I had my health insurance. I had, you know, all this stuff. And I think it was the end of 17 where when I finally filed taxes and I'm like, man, I'm making three times the amount of money as my job is paying me. I think yeah. if there's ever a time, it should be, <laughs> it should be now. Nah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but truthfully, interestingly enough, and I think back about this, I, I mean, I could have still done all this. Even yeah. if I were like my job was not nine to five, it was like seven thirty to like two thirty, right? Three o'clock. Yeah. And I easily could have continued even to this day, no matter all the stuff that I've done, I could have easily kept the job. So for yeah. and for anybody that's watching this, you know, they're always scared of that time, right? Time crunch. Um, can they do this on the side? What if they have a full time job? And I always tell people when you're starting like this business, and you'll probably agree with me. Um, your job is like your asset, right? Yeah. That That's what it allows you to be able to have the time to learn and mess up. And, you know, you're not putting your family's, you know, financial uh, foundation on the line while you're yeah. doing this. Maybe you have to spend more time away from them, but at least you're learning a new skill and you're starting this business and making extra money. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's just prioritizing, right? Like, just like anything else, you can do it. There's Everyone has the same 24 hours. 100%. It's like, how much, what do you want to sacrifice, right? It's it's like, for me, a lot of it was just not doing stupid things, like, you know, <laughs> going out on Saturday nights. It's it's not important anymore, right? Like, yep. when, when you were younger, I think we all kind of fall into that trap saying, hey, 100%. it's time to spend time with our friends, which is fine. It's There's nothing wrong in that. But once you have kids... 
and family that's kind of like hey uh i can kind of get up early on a sunday morning at 4 a.m 5 a.m and do a solid three four hours of work which frees me up for the rest of the day or i can sleep in right it's what what is your choice like what do yeah. you want to do and i think anyone who's motivated can find the time it's not that there is no time like i i am able to do a 9 to 5 but again my 9 to 5 is truly 9 to 5 like once i come home i don't have to do anything else there's mm-hmm. no like after hours meetings and it it's my current job is on purpose like i know i'm getting way less paid way less mm-hmm. but that's on purpose because they are flexible with my schedule you know they don't have any after hour meetings there's no craziness like some of the other jobs that i had before where you know you were they were paying you well but then mm-hmm. they expected the same amount that you would be available for a saturday afternoon call or you would be available after hours and that's something that you can kind of figure out on your own with to what's more important and to me growing my business is more important period because that is going to stay right today god forbid i get laid off i'm not going to be worried about stressed about finances because i know it's something's already coming in all i need to do is kind of pour more gasoline on the fire and then get more right so i and i know i can do it it's just mm-hmm. i have to balance it out right with everything else yo oh, yeah yeah i 100% agree is that especially now right we're going into an interesting time of this economy or whatever and this is not really fear mongering but there's going to be some a lot of lost jobs in the next 2 to 3 years and yeah. uh i would say that you know ha- having that balance between work and entrepreneurship yeah. uh, that's how you protect yourself so you're in a good position i should say that <laughs> yeah it's awesome that's great so what do you think um uh your main prospecting prospecting so my main one was going to actually in person networking meeting that's how i landed nice. my first client uh so again i was in phoenix and i was relatively new to phoenix uh, i'd only been there 3 years so i didn't know didn't have much of a network coming from la i had a big network there mm-hmm. so i kind of said hey you know where do people go where do business folks go to meet and get businesses in person networking events so uh oddly enough i went to three or four and i met the same financial advisor three times and i didn't pitch him till the third time mm-hmm. because finally he asked saying hey what do you do and i kind uh, of yeah. I, i i we talked briefly but i never pitched him and the minute i pitched him he was like oh that's sure. something that i really need to know like i i would love to do it did a two week trial paid trial for him for uh, the annuities campaign that was straight from the vault it copy and paste he saw results and then he basically signed up and he stayed with me for close to a year on and off because he switched jobs mm. but that was my like my first paying client but what i did was i had him kind of i gave him a discount on to the third month or fourth month maybe and said hey if i just kind of knock 100 dollars off can you just write me a testimonial right write me a, a a kind of a review which he did and then i parlayed that into cold emails that i was sending to other financial planners to say hey here's here's someone who's doing it in phoenix can i get it and then from my cold emails is when i started kind of getting more traction but honestly my first few were just in person networking and cold emails targeted cold emails showing results from what i was getting so that was one and then my in person got me a realtor too so i kind of got them results and did the same process yeah i know that like you uh in the group you're kind of known for realtor campaigns right like that's kind of what uh, your clients are all over the place or are they more uh, niche down no they're they're all over the place but i do have a lot of realtors and my realtor campaigns have done really well like i've had touch would have had people who have actually sold homes from the campaigns that have come up so uh, again one of the most successful one is my campaign in dfw where one of the realtors she's still a client and again she turns it on off on off mm-hmm. but she's been with me 3 years now 
Wow. And she has sold close to like 10 or 12 homes from all the leads that we have generated. And I'm sure she has closed more, but, uh, <laughs> she, you know, it's just like tracking wise, that's, hard, that's what yeah. I have. So, uh, so she's, she's, she openly says and has acknowledged me on her Facebook saying, Hey, I, she got like some top producer award and she openly said, hey, this is due to like a great marketing service provided by me mm-hmm. and kind of tagged me in the group and everything. So that's kind of good to see that I didn't have to ask her. She Just she it. recognizes that the service that I provided helped her kind of get that award or whatever else she got from her brokerage. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And so um, typically, like, what's your average retainer when it comes to... Uh... I don't know, just say average, like average retainer for your clients. Yeah, so average is about 800 to 900 a month is what my retainer and Are you is. doing one service or are you- more- Yeah, just one service. So I'm Facebook just doing ads. lead generation. That's mainly, okay. so almost like 90% of my clients are all lead generation. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got two or three lately on SEO. And then I, again, like for SEO, I'm just kind of outsourcing it. That's yeah. pretty much it. So- that's something that I want to grow, but I just focus purely and focus mainly on just lead generation and that to lead generation through Facebook ads. Um, I don't even do Google ads. And so <laughs> just purely Facebook ads. That's it. <laughs> and listen, I mean, if that's what, if that's what you're confident uh, uh, in, that's what you stick with. Right. I mean, it's yeah. like if you're confident, you could pitch it well and you have the results to show stick with it. Right. Yeah. So um, typically on your retainers, because I always get this question asked, do you, does the client pay ad spend or do you? Yeah, the client pays ad spend. So it's 800 is my services, like an average, depending mm-hmm. on the niche. Obviously, some are more, some are less. Uh, but yeah, so the client pays plus the ad spend that the client pays. On an average, I always tell, like just a general rule of thumb, I always say, hey, start with $20 a day. Mm-hmm. Uh, there have been clients that are spending forty, fifty dollars a day, and there are clients, uh, some of the local niches like wedding planners or wedding photographers or maternity photographers, they can yeah. get away with even ten dollars. But I always have them say, "Hey, start with twenty, and you can always scale it down or up depending on that first month results." And most don't really make any changes once they are comfortable with that twenty dollar ad spend, you know. Yeah, absolutely. When they get the results, they have an ROI. It's like, don't touch it. <laughs> Just yeah, leave, exactly. leave it with what, what works. Yeah. And, that, and that's perfect because then every month they kind of know what they're going to spend, your retainer, their ad spend, the, yeah. the their income, their ROI, and then there's no more questions. So yeah, that, that's fantastic. So what? let me ask you, what's your, do you have a goal to get out of the nine to five or you're you're good where you are? I'm just curious. No, I'm, I'm going to be good for a while. So what happened was I went through a divorce too. So now I have child support on my, oh boy. Uh, you know, <laughs> so I, I can't get away from that. So <laughs> most likely uh, I, I'm going to continue the nine to five, but my goal myself, to be honest, is to remove myself from the agency, right? Because mm-hmm. I, I think I'm just like any any entrepreneur, you scale up, you get to a point where you need to get yourself out of the processes, which is which is how I can scale, right? That's that's the bottom line. So yeah, uh, this year, um, last two months ago, I hired my first VA, which mm-hmm. again, I've never done. People are shocked that I don't have a VA. So <laughs> I got a VA. I kind of went through first one. This, I'm on to my second one. Uh, but the goal is to kind of get myself out of this this process of fulfilling versus just kind of scaling it up and be able to scale a lot more. I found an SEO agency which does everything that I want them like the right way with mm-hmm. the reporting and everything else. So I, I know I'm able to now scale SEO a lot more than what I've been doing in the past. And um, yeah, so goal is to kind of get myself out of the day to day and and kind of keep the same balance going. Yeah, so scale so scale remove yourself and have tasks for other people. Now let me ask you like typically though you know on your average like Facebook ads client like you know you know other than setup like mm-hmm. you know how much are you really spending uh per client on average in a month once they're up and running? Not much, maybe 
hour, two hours at the most, depending on how the campaigns are doing. Obviously, if they struggle, then I, I spend a lot Casting. more. But I've had campaigns that I've literally not touched for months on end for the very fact that it performs. The client yeah. is happy. There's no reason for you to mess with it. So maybe an hour, two hours at the most stops Once. to make sure I still go in and look at the numbers. I still will kind of make sure that I'm on top of it. But yeah, sometimes it works. And I my longest running was for a maternity photographer that I hadn't touched like seven months in a row. Like I did not do anything, just let it run. <laughs> yep. Yeah, well, you set, you set up the systems in the back. So they're getting notified. They're getting all that, oh, yeah. everything that they need. Yeah. And so there, there is no, you know, reason to touch. And that's why you still work. It was nine to yeah, five. Exactly. It doesn't exactly. take you much time. Yeah. That's fantastic. Typically, like what, um, what are you doing white label wise? Are you just running, like setting up and running ads for, for people? Yeah. So basically they have someone, uh, had like six clients and they all, he was doing, uh, the, the Google ads, but he wasn't doing the Facebook ads. Uh, so yeah, I'm basically just setting up the campaigns and the notification, the back end, all all of that. And then the partner kind of deals with the client, deals with the communication, sets the expectations, and that's just how it works. Yeah, yeah. No, that's great. Do you so do you want to to scale on the white label side or do you want to scale on the like the front end like direct to uh client? I'm open to both. Uh, I've honestly, like a white label, I've talked to a lot of people who are interested, but even like from our group, from, uh, you know, you talk on Upwork, but not a lot of people come through. That's that's my experience. So it's kind of like, hey, you know, unless they have paying clients. Right, in hand. <laughs> in hand, then it's easier. But people who are trying to say, hey, I want to partner with you and what should I do? But they they can't get over that hump or, you know, I don't get enough from them to make it worth both our time. So uh, I just, I think if I scale, honestly, I think with the partner that I have for SEO now, I think I'm I'm well situated to kind of push that a lot more where I'm finding that I can get clients for SEO for like 1,000, 1,500 bucks and it's not costing me that much. Plus I'm not doing the work. I'm, I have, and I have, reporting i have a account manager and all those things set up so i don't have to worry about the day-to-day -day management of the client because the client can log into their dashboard and see all the work that's been done so that's that's my goal for the next six months to be honest is to see if i can get more seo clients for myself yeah and so you know seo right it's like the it's like the uh what's the the good word it's like the go golden uh pot at the end of a rainbow is like that like businesses they love like the fact that like one day i could right one day i yeah. could be ranking for this search term one day i will and that's the hard part also is that yeah. you know um it's hard to sell that but if you have the confidence that either number one you could do it and fulfill on it and get the results and number two or you have a company that will white label it for you yeah. then it makes it a no-brainer and it adds the service to your current client list which is also another good thing too depending on yeah the I've, I've done that so the same maternity photographer that i've had for the longest time uh she was for the longest time she just was a lead gen like pure lead generation nothing else she had a website i tried to kind of convince her to do seo but she didn't want to do it and then about two and a half years in she finally gave in and said <laughs> i can't do this seo like i can't get it ranked which i i kind of said i told you so but i, I was like okay that's fine you know i provided i kind of walked her through it and she was like okay let's do it so that was it was good for me to pick it up because i had been with her for a long time and she knew that that i could do it but you know sometimes you're stubborn and uh yep. <laughs> you want to do it yourself but yeah i've i've, I've done both ways i've parlayed SEO into lead gen and lead gen into SEO so that it works. It's, it's just another service that I can provide and provide successfully. That's, that's the key. That's always, that's always the key. Yeah. Um, so let me ask this. I only have a few more questions it's getting late. I know. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Uh, and I just came off our uh, Q and a. Yeah. I know. Jason, I gotta go. See you later. <laughs>
What's um so because you do now do our coaching, I think we, you know, you were brought in about three or four months ago, maybe five months ago. You do our uh coaching for um, you know, people that are running Facebook ad campaigns. What's typically the mistakes that that new people make or even veterans that are that you see that are making? I think the biggest mistake that I see is the ad copy. Like it's mm-hmm. not the technical setup, the targeting and all of those things you can kind of get away with it. But I think it's just the copy, most 99% of the time, the copy is the key for any anything, right? Yep. And what I see when I'm when I'm kind of coaching folks on or when people come in with their ads, the big the first thing I see is the copy is super weak. It doesn't hit, doesn't follow the basic principles of you know pain, you know, trigger the pain and find a solution, call out the solution. And None of those things work. So I think if if anyone had to do take a stab at Facebook advertising, they would should first look at copywriting or at least figure out how to write a good ad copy. And these days you can use chat GTP or any other AI features. But what I always tell them is, yes, that's a great way to start off something, but that yes. shouldn't be the end result, right? That is a great generation, idea generation. Try two, three tools. And then maybe that's what I do is I just let them run. And then I like, oh, I like this line. I like this line. And then I bring it together on my own terms. But that's, that's I think, the key is people just don't pay attention to the ad copy. And then they kind of are struggling because the copy is in there and they think something's wrong with the setup or, you know, they should be targeting different versus just focusing on the copy. Yeah, like, you know, you could follow so many different um, copy frameworks, right? You know, you have call out the audience problem, agitate the problem, give the solution and tell them that the solution won't won't be here forever, right? Right. Like the the FOMO is people buy, people usually buy on um, its emotion, obviously. Yeah. Well, there's three, there's three. You have emotion and they go through a logic stage. And then they also could buy on FOMO, right? Fear of missing out. So there's, you know, there's different triggers, but yeah, ad, ad copy. I, I nowadays with Chat GP, uh, GPT, GPT, I could never say it right. You could get a good framework right. nowadays, even if you know nothing, and at right. least have something to start with. Um, yeah. But you, you at least need to know a little bit of the framework to be able to make sense of it, also. Yeah, and it's just it's just not taking it blindly at face value, right? A lot of people just kind of say, "Oh, I used I did use ChatGTP, and this is what they gave us." Well, that's it's what you input is what you're gonna get out. But just because you got something doesn't mean it's the best. Exactly. You had to still kind of put yourself in that position and customer's position and say, "Hey, is this something that's going to kind of make people click and give their information to me or or kind of go to the landing page or whatever action you're asking them to take?" And a lot of times I think you know people are at least the ones that I've seen they're just kind of blindly just using some random copy instead of putting more thought and effort into it. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Uh, I'm just going to throw it up against the wall and hopefully it sticks type of mentality yeah. sometimes. But you yeah. know, this, this is your money and people's money. So sometimes a little bit more of thought uh, should go into it. Yeah. Uh, I want to kind of really quickly circle back uh, because you said something very important in the beginning. And this is where I think we're, you know, the audience that might be watching this or or students that might be watching this is that you made a, a great point in the be- beginning where you said you ran a trial, right? Mm-hmm. And they paid ad spend, but you didn't pay you anything, correct? Correct. Yeah. yeah. So in the beginning, I was doing a lot of those trials. Uh, I was literally just any niche that I was going to break into because, again, I didn't have Facebook results. I had my marketing background to fall back on, but a lot of people obviously wanted results. Yeah. So, again, it's just like trying to... Uh, I think initially I had the realtor and more. Uh, I had the financial planner. Of, I got few financial planners, but then I don't know how I stumbled into like the wedding photography business, right? And every wedding photographer, I would offer them the same thing instead of even a two week. I was just doing a one week trial because I knew they could get a lot of leads and yeah. fast. So all, all I would say is like, hey, pay me a hundred bucks for a one week trial see how the leads 
come to you if you like it then and i would always kind of get them pre qualified by actually telling them hey it's if if it moves forward it's this price so that they know that at the end of that week they're not surprised by the pricing right it's it's already there it's in their face at that at the end of that week normally it would just be an easy call and say okay do you want to continue and they say yes then i would just invoice them and move on but yeah i think a lot of times if you are if you don't have the results then just do a free trial uh let the let the client pay for the ad spend i think that is key because they need to have some skin in the mm-hmm. game yep uh i i don't like to ever pay for it myself i just say hey pay for the ad spend right it's going directly to facebook or google uh it's not going in my pocket i can hook up your card you know it's all it's all directly going there and then you can pay for my services if it's valuable to you yeah yeah and so and another thing too that you that i think was probably a very big turning point for you in the beginning and you kind of just ran through it was that you you said to your first client i'll take 100 bucks off as long as you give me a case study yeah because i mean you know this is where people i think fall short um and it might be because of time. I don't. I don't really know. Or they're embarrassed. I'm not sure. Uh, but I talked about this last year at the live event. Is that like you really are really, if you really concentrate on this one feature, is that you are one client away from blowing your business up? Because if you do everything in your power to get the results from for that client, and how much easier was it for you to land the next client with a case study? Oh, much easier. Like I was literally. I was he his. Uh, testimonial is what I was emailing other financial planners because the, they and basically just saying, hey, here's my client in Phoenix who received X amount of leads for this dollars. And here's what he had to say. And just just that email, that cold email got me a lot of responses because people were like they they could see that someone is entrusting their money and it's, has used my services. Yeah. And they were reaching out to me. So it, it truly was helpful to do it. And I did the same thing with uh, wedding photographers. I had like six, seven testimonials, which are, to be honest, are dated now, but I'm still using them and mm-hmm. it's still landing me clients. And I have a, like a one pager landing page for wedding photographers that it's not generating a bunch of leads because I'm not putting any effort into it. But right. <laughs> every now and then I just get random leads because of that landing page, you know? Yeah, yeah. Did you did you uh, did you ever run the Facebook campaign for wedding? Because I think we have that. I don't know if you ever ran that. I one. don't think I did. I don't. I think I tried a version of it, but that time was I was stressed. Like I was, uh, <laughs> I was down with the money part, so I, I didn't spend paid ads per se. But I I think I tried it very briefly, and honestly, I probably didn't spend enough money to say yeah or nay whether that works or not. Yeah, I think, you know, and and this is one of the things and I'll kind of slowly end on this is that, you know, there's a lot of shiny stuff out there in regards to scaling. Right. So, you know, run Facebook ads, you can run pay per click ads and all this, this stuff. And, and and you can. Right. Because because, pay, you know, paying to acquire, as long as you understand that you have some sort of bankroll. But I think for most people running this business, um, it it comes down to eventually it comes down to just sharing your client results mm-hmm. and being able to just kind of network. And, you know, cold emailing is fine, right? Because it doesn't cost you anything. Uh, Cold calling doesn't cost you anything. And you start to kind of get into the realm of, uh, I better have some sort of capital if I'm going to start running ads for my agency. And it has to be worth it, right? They have to be more higher ticket. They have to be, you know, if you're going to spend two grand to acquire, you're hoping that you're going to, you know, not charge only three, four, five hundred dollars a month. So all those different things, but referrals, referrals, referrals in case studies, case studies. And you don't need to do any paid ads. You don't need to do anything. Yeah, I think it's it's a lot of people just don't ask for testimonials. So that's that's the key is like, hey, just ask ask for it. Even if a client is going out or is happy but is not going to move forward, I always ask saying, hey, I understand you can't move forward. Would you would you would you be open to just writing me a review? And most people will write your review. They they're not gonna if they're happy with you there's no reason why they won't give you a review yep and those those stick around forever right it's it's just like every client you work with you know ask for it that's that's what i said 
Oh, hundred percent. I, I, uh, my, my father's one of his best friends was just like, he, he was a gym teacher turned life insurance agent. And he's probably over the last 25 years, never did anything other than a million dollars a year, if not more, um, uh, per year in commissions. Mm-hmm. And he always said, he goes, all I did was I sold one policy and I wouldn't leave until they gave me three names. I sold mm-hmm. another one. I wouldn't leave until they gave me three. He had like the three, the three name rule. And yeah. he's like, I wouldn't, he's like, I swear to God, I would not get up from the kitchen table without like, I would just sit there and I would just say, I need three names. I'm not leaving until I need three names, but you build that kind of rapport with your clients as well. Right. You, can, you know, be funny and joke around about that. But uh, yeah, so that, I mean, listen, this is awesome. So you're still working at nine to five. You're happy. You're happy where you are. Yeah. You've got 10, nine, 10 direct clients, six white labeled clients, averaging eight, 900 bucks in retainers. You're doing pretty well, my friend. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's definitely it's not overnight. Like just like anyone, if if anyone is watching this, I think yeah. that's the key for people absolutely. to understand that this doesn't happen overnight. At first year, I struggled, uh, but again, it was a lot of me being unfocused on you know finding a job, trying to get this off the ground. But everything snowballs, and just like anything else, it 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 is possible. You just have to put in the effort and, and stick it out. A lot of people quit by saying, hey, um, month six, it's like, hey, it didn't work, right? But you put in six months, what, what's going to happen, right? So, yeah, I'm 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 definitely happy where I am and, and blessed to be, be here and part of the group for sure. Well, you're an asset to the group, that's for sure. And I, I always hear uh, great things coming from the students about how much you're helping them. So I appreciate that. I appreciate your time since it's almost 10 o'clock my time. Yeah. And you're you're in Arizona, right? No, I'm in Dallas. So it's like Oh, now you're in Dallas. That's right. Yeah. So it's running up there as well. Yeah. Uh so hopefully we'll see you at the next live event. I appreciate your time, man. Anything you need, just let me know.